the key. This is a key. <laughs> the key to shake well, I think it comes down to three things. Uh, as long as these three things are covered, I don't think there should be a distinct style to shake. Like, I'm Japanese and there's definitely like a, okay, this is how to shake. You stand like 45 degrees and then your chest height and then you do a figure eight and like your face is 45 degrees, smile a little bit and then you do it for uh, <laughs> 20 times at a strength, whatever, a speed of 15 kilometers per minute, what, I don't know, something, whatever, <laughs> stuff like that. I don't think there should be any set style to do it. You can just do anything as long as these three things are covered. Uh, I said durable, but <clears throat> uh, really, whatever won't hurt you, because typically if you're working at a bar, you you're shaking all the time, so you're using certain amount, use certain part of the muscle. So you really need to figure out a way that's not gonna hurt you. That you can keep doing it. You can come. You can do it every day for hours. <clears throat> and so that's why it kind of relates to the Japanese. But you use a snap because you use, if you use your muscle like like this, like like that. Let's let's use the Boston shaker. If you like shake it like like this, using your muscle, like right here, gonna hurt for sure, or like your shoulder gonna hurt. If you just like no motion. If you use your grip, so like the cocktail, ice, and drinks, it, it goes like this, right, like, back and forth. So you you use your for uh, just muscle it'll go back like bum 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 the goal right if you use a wrist like that it kind of big like not really like like this in a sense just by the, the wrist it'll you can have the about the same amount of uh, force without moving your muscle arm and muscle so like that so that's why I like cover shaker is ideal like you can get the same force by by the snap snap like that kind of big kind of I'm doing kind of over overreacting but so but durable like some people is that some people that will figure it out even I'm not really good at shaking with one hand but like, because I don't like to I, I like to properly like handle it, but some people uh, will come up with like motions that uh, won't hurt them. Basically, that's that's very important. Second, safety, another very important thing. Like you shake a cocktail like this, say because oftentimes your hands are wet. You're wet. What if I right? If I if I shake like this towards you and it kind of scary like ooh, ooh. <laughs> right sideways at least you're gonna just hit your in like your co-worker <laughs> your your bar back your your fellow bartender will will get hurt you know by just buy them drinks fine if it hits a customer it's a big deal don't shake it like this shake it sideways that's that's number one uh safety whatever safety stuff and then lastly, about the looks. I told earlier my, my friend Colin, he's like, he's like, he's like, very cool. You watch him work and then like, just like. Uh, that you just like, through practicing, you establish your style. I definitely have a style that I, I, I shake. I don't know if it, it looks good, but I, I do it that way. I think it looks okay. <laughs> I think I look, I've seen I've seen videos of me shaking. I think it looks okay. I do it like I do it like this. I like 
Anyways, all those like 3D things, it, I don't think it's making a big difference. You can kind of go more geek out and then, okay, so this is like a, like a mo like mono and then you kind of add in like this, like the ice gonna hit like all multiple different ways, like it'll gonna, it's more uh, complicated and more bubbles and what, like, maybe but it's, that's more in here it's happening in here it's 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 90 I, I, i'm gonna say it's 90 percent just looks and then your your flow how like how how you do it as a flow as long as these things are covered i don't think it matters how you shake it just don't shake it like this just don't just don't do this Just don't do this. Imagine your customer is sitting like, kind of like my angle, maybe lower angle, and then I'm like, oh yeah. Like, there's that's there's no feelings in it. It's just like, huh? like oh, I wanna go home. Oh, I wanna, I wanna smoke a cigarette. I wanna go home. All right? Just pay attention. Pay attention to what you do. I was like, okay, how can I make this drink good? Okay, is it done yet? Mm? Okay, pass, pass. Almost there, almost there. Okay, what should I do? Put, put your feelings in. Important. Alright, sorry. <clears throat> Last part. Uh, <clears throat> I usually differentiate. For, I mean, the last one is kind of out of necessity, but I do do it differently. So many four ways I I distinguish uh, depending on how the drinks are set up or what do I want to achieve, right? Uh, first is the light shake, uh, and then from now on I'm gonna use uh, ice so you can kind of hear it. The light shake is. Like just mix. Like you don't need to water it down. You don't need to add extra bubbles or ice flakes or anything. You just just to mix it. Uh, this is. I do this when the cocktail has a lot of either ice or juice. That after I finish the cocktail and the customer like deliver to the customer, extra dilution gonna ha happen. So I don't want the dilution to happen before I finish. So I just it just enough to mix. So like things like Collins or mojitos, Paloma, <clears throat> some like Moscow mules, like depend. Like some some people do shake before. Uh, some people don't use sugar. You know, it depends, right? I don't. I actually don't use sugar, but. This is an example that has like a lot of juice or water or ice, <clears throat> and uh, I'll show you. A, I'll show you a bad example. I'll show you a bad example. Okay. So you order. What do you order? Let's say let's say Collins. Look okay, at Tom Collins, right? Tom Collins is usually. Old Tom Gin, and let me use water. It's water. Old Tom Gin, lemon juice, simple syrup. And then you shake it with ice, you pour it into a, a glass, and then you top it up with soda water and garnish. So, say your stuff is done, and you add ice, and then in this case, like there's a there's a pretty big debate on which one you gotta put the ice in. I always put it in the bigger one, 100% of the time. Uh, my reason is uh, two reasons. <clears throat> one is because I built it. I usually build it on the smaller one, right? So I want to separate the, the cocktail and then the ice, right? Second, uh, <clears throat> I think this is not enough ice because you, you fill it 
it only goes to like here. While you can you can fill it up to like here or even like more. So you can use a lot more ice, and then all you're doing is control. You just control the dilution by shaking it when, when to start, when to stop. So I, I always put it on the bigger one. Sorry, going back to the bad example of uh, Collins. You do it and then you shake it. There you go, right? Oh, and then you hang out with your friend. Oh, look at the sale. Oh, you check out customer, swipe credit card, whatever. Oh, I forgot about this. Oh, shit. Shit more. Done. And then you pick a glass that's room temperature. This room temperature, right? And then add ice, like so so level. <clears throat> This, I, I didn't really put enough liquid, so I'm gonna not use it. And then room temp ice, no, room temp glassware. <clears throat> you put ice in it, it's already gonna water down. Imagine this was a smaller ice. And you add your booze, and then you add your soda, Topo Chico, whatever. Uh, imagine a Topo Chico is room temperature. Like it's not in the refrigerator, it's like imagine your soda is room temp also. Carbonation is going to go fast. And then you result with a glass with watered down booze and sugar and citrus. Uh, <clears throat> room temperature soda water or, or soda that's not only not keeping the, the carbonation but also it's melting the ice faster because it's room temperature and then not enough ice so the ice is like kind of floating on the top and this bottom is nothing All right this is a shitty drink a lot of people do that this is not hard so when you do a light one, you pre-chill pre your glass. This is not cold enough, actually, even. And then, I'll use the same thing. Then you build your cocktail, go in, and then just enough to mix it. Like that, that's it. That's it, like, like, and then pour it in, make sure it's like, what is that, I'll pour it in, that kind of stuff. So whatever it has a lot of ice or kind of have a lot of juice, don't shake too much. Just enough to mix it. Next, uh, it's medium. Medium is always hard because there's like the lighter side of the medium or harder side of the medium. But uh, it's just whatever you think it's done. Uh, you want to, you do want to mix it well. So I wrote down high LVB, the high alcohol content, but it comes on the rocks. Good example will be a margarita <clears throat> or like a medium alcohol level, and you serve it up like no ice. Or uh, I. I Come up with like a more like delicate cocktail that like you want to make a apiation with like a delicate style gin. If you don't want to overshake and kind of break the balance of it, so for that, uh, it's good to know. It's good to be able to hear the shape, the sound. So as the ice gets broken the sound changes actually it's easier to tell the sound probably with the Boston shaker so when you shake it it's, start, it's gonna start from the 
very hard, harder noise, like taka 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 taka, and then as the ice kind of gets broken, it'll be like more like a muddy noise, like taka taka taka, like taka 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 to taka 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 taka, and then finally it becomes a little bit more slushy, like jaka 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 jaka. So like that, that's how you can kind of different like measure uh, where do you want to finish. Read this like the median is really in the middle, so it really kind of different. I'll, I'll show you. Hopefully you can hear it. That's taka taka right? And then now it's a little bit more jaka jaka. And then now it's more like more more like slushy. This, I mean, using water to shake it is really not a good example because ice is water too. Like if you eat alcohol, it's it's pretty different. Later, I'll make one cocktail for me to drink. So hopefully, you can hear uh, more of the sound change. All right. So that's to kind of distinguish where do you want to finish. All right. The hard shake, I'm going to explain at the end because uh, I'm going to make a cocktail using my hard shake method. So let's skip it for now and then uh, do the double shake. A double shake is more of a necessity. Uh, it's when you have an egg white in your drink, like a whiskey sour or Ramos Gym Fizz or whatnot. So egg white is really hard to mix. <clears throat> so you need to do your shaking twice. And typically you do, that's called dry shake. You basically you shake it without ice in it. So you have all your ingredients and then you shake it without ice for like a minute or so. Like, like that. And then now your cocktail is all nice and frothy, but no ice, so it, it didn't water down or get cold. So you put ice in it, and then you chill it down and add a little bit of water, and then done. <clears throat> Typically. Some people do it backwards. Uh, I won't go into super detail, but like typically you dry shake it first, and then wet shake it. Wet I don't know if it's a term for wet shake, but you shake it with ice <clears throat> afterwards, and then you strain it. And uh, usually double strain, because, uh, but I'll, I won't talk about the super details. Uh, the, when I do double shake, I usually do fast and short. I mean, the, the shake is fast and short. Not me, fast and short. So, I'm gonna show you. Said your your double uh, your dry shake is done. Shh, like shake is done. So your, your cocktail already frothy and all the, the whole thing is mixed, right? Your sweet sour and egg whites and booze all mixed. You just need to water it. So you, you the cocktail is already mixed. So you just need to water it down and chill it. So you put it in. It's fast and short. But the stroke is fast, as fast as you can. And then you don't have to shake it for like too long because you just, just enough to chill it and add water. So that's a double shake. All right. Hard shake was invented in Japan. I cannot recall the bartender who came up with it. Very famous. He, he's still alive. K Kishi. Mr. Kishi? <clears throat> I forgot. Uh, this is a method that you basically shake the hell out of it to overly brew, like it's called bruising the alcohol. You overly, overly water down and put a lot of bubbles, a lot of ice flakes into the cocktail. And you want to mix well, a lot of ice and a lot of bubbles. 
this is this technique or method is specifically great for something with very high alcohol and then just really simple stuff uh, <clears throat> like a gimlet or a daiquiri a gimlet I specifically like a really heavy London dry gin like my favorite is Sip Sipsmith uh, another probably the main major brand could be like a Bombay Sapphire or a Beef Eater like heavyweight gin ready to be higher alcohol this is probably not super high alcohol 41 yeah not high alcohol but uh, a daiquiri of course like higher alcohol rum that you really want to put a lot of air in like you want like ice shards all over like flaky and it's like uh, usually these drinks will come out kind of light green because of the lime juice but it makes it almost white on top and it's called a Japanese hard shake and uh, when I do it I usually start with the uh, like a waltz like it's like a rhythm so like I do one two three one two three one two three right? and uh, <coughs> I usually do the first one hard one two three like I kind of really try to put all my force into the first uh, stroke and then three and then I I, I I try to bruise it in the first one like BAM to BAM like try to bruise it and then <clears throat> I try to bruise it first and then I try to add the bubbles by fast and short stroke following the bruising part so like you break the ice first and you move it around to make it bubbly <clears throat> next because when you pour you want the bubbly and then you, like you put the motion and stuff that's really just for show it's you you pour like or pour like same thing same thing just this looks more active than that's all so I'm gonna make a daiquiri Woohoo! thirst all right <clears throat> so this is a, a recipe from Jettison it's called our daiquiri I'm gonna use two ounces of Panama Pacific this is of course from Panama it's a very clean style rum like vodka -like. not vodka like but it's very Dry and clean. Panama. That's two ounces, right? And then I'm adding a half an ounce of rum de zone. This is an agricole, rum agricole. I forgot to chill my glass. I don't have a pebble ice right now. Kind of chills, okay. Just me drinking. Usually I always put like a pebble ice, chill it down. All right, <clears throat> half an ounce of the nizzle, which is agricole rum, funky style, high alcohol, this 50 proof. Oh, this is 80 proof. Did I say 50 proof? This 100 proof, so 50% alcohol, it's 40% alcohol. So higher alcohol, lots of booze. <clears throat> mostly clean, a most, uh, little bit of funky booze in and then I'll do equal parts of sweet and sour so I'm doing a three quarter ounce of lime juice and I call it the complicated syrup All right. Bam. complicated syrup <clears throat> I call it this way to counter the simple syrup, but uh, this is a grapefruit oleo syrup, which is great oleo, oleo saccharum is a style of sugar when you get a zest of a citrus and you put it in sugar. In this case, I vacuum seal it, it's very easy. So essential oil from the skin seeps out to the sugar and make it kind of wet, right? It makes it wet. And then you add water to this, just enough to make it liquid. 
usually like like this much water, like half more than like less than half of the amount. You can make a grapefruit essence syrup. That's what I usually use for my cocktail. All right. The sweet and sour balance, the equal parts, is a good the guidance. Uh, you can really like, but like sourness from uh, lime juice can can differ. So you really just like check. Yeah, it's good. You know, lime juice can really differ. So simple cocktail like this, you should really check every single one. All right. So all the stuff is in. I'm gonna toss the chilled glass. It's kind of chilled and do the Japanese hollow shake. Right. So, I don't want my ice to be sitting in the shaker because I'm, I'm gonna drink it. <laughs> the actual stuff. So, just, I'm gonna explain before I actually do it. I usually pick all, like the same size. But this is actually pretty good. Same size of the ice. If I see like small ones like that, it's just gonna bother and it's gonna dilute and it becomes more dilution. So toss it. I usually only use big one, big eyes, and then fill it to the top. All right, lock. I'm gonna lock it. Open, close, it's locked, and then I'm gonna do the hard shake. Bubble me, it's almost like white, right? That's good. <clears throat> this good. Uh, for me, for my bakery, I like to do lime zest of the garnish, like just a little bit. That's all. Sort of aroma, and uh, I do the bitters on top. My favorite bitters is the Bob's Summer Bitters. Which I don't have, it's kind of hard to get, so I don't have it at the moment. Uh, so I'm using, I've been using hibiscus bitters as a backup. You kind of put it, beep, 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 beep. and one good sign if you have like really nice ice flakes and uh, bubbles on top, everything's gonna sit on top because it's gonna try to come up. And it's a good sign that you have a properly shaken battery. Right. Cheers. Mm. <clears throat> so you get the small ice shard, ice flakes in it that kind of adds texture, but not to the point where you're like, you're like chewing it. It just kind of dances in, then inside your mouth. Uh, with frothy texture. Sweet and sour balance is good. Uh, <clears throat> I do like my, like I want just, Try to meet right in the middle. I don't want to. A lot of people won't like it on the citrusy, tartar side. But uh, if you make it too tart, you start kind of feeling it. Like I, I kind of feel it like here. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe just me, but try to meet the balance and aroma, texture. Very cold cocktail. It's good. Cocktail is very cold, so it's it feels like it's not strong alcohol. It's like it feels like you can just chug the whole thing in like three seconds. If you do that, you get you get drunk real fast. So I I know that. So I try to sip on it, but uh, yeah, I think I did talk a lot. But uh, this is pretty much everything I can show you as far as shakes going on. So
Oh, I definitely got got my shakes. Uh, you can too. It's not hard. Just imagine how how you want your end result to be, and you you can choose how to get there. It's it's that easy. Yeah, cocktail is easy. Just put things in and shake it. Shake your money maker. Shake your money maker. Shake your money maker.